the Eucharistic miracle of Ospiro, Spain, in the year 1300. Therefore whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord unworthily will have to answer for the body and blood of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 11:27. Ospiro is a tiny hamlet in the northwest of Spain, decked with green lush meadows, flaunting the gorgeous display of the Leones Mountains. The village is 1300 meters atop the mountain ranges of Ocurel and Os Oncars, and is frequently battered by some of the fiercest weather in Spain. The simple prehistoric setting of the village is iconic. The Church of Santa Maria la Real takes one back in time, to the miracle of the Holy Grail that made this humble village famous all across Europe. Founded in the year 836, St. Mary the Royal is the oldest pre-Romanesque church on the entire French road of the Camino de Santiago. In 1072, a monastery was entrusted to the monks of St. Giro de Aurillac by King Alfonso VI of Leon and Castile. They governed the church for centuries, attending to pilgrims who traveled to Compostela to pay their respects at the tomb of St. James the Apostle. Friar Antonio de Yeps, a Benedictine monk and historian from Spain, lived in the 15th century and penned the account of the miracle of the Holy Grail in his book Cronica General de la Orden de San Benito or General Chronicle of the Order of Saint Benedict. In 1300, Ospiro experienced a rough and harsh winter. In this village, there lived a Benedictine priest who had fallen from faith and no longer believed in the reality of transubstantiation. One day, the blizzard turned extremely violent, the wind bitterly cold and the snow grew thicker and larger. The priest thought for certain, that no one would make it to church on such a terrible freezing day, thus, he would not have to celebrate Holy Mass. To his utter dismay, his hopes were shattered. A farmer by the name of Juan Santan, from the neighboring hamlet of Barcama or came to church. Amid the icy storm, Juan, a devout Christian, bravely climbed the treacherous mountain path fought the fury of the hail, and arrived at the sanctuary of St. Mary. Instead of appreciating the faithfulness of the farmer, the priest scorned and mocked the farmer's piety in his heart. Puzzled, he thought to himself, why would someone go through such great pain and hardship for a little piece of bread and wine? He considered his great sacrifice as foolish and futile. Grudgingly, he began to celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass. The priest's lack of faith scandalized the farmer, but he made no comment. Our Lord who is so merciful and kind was about to reward the farmer's love for the Eucharist and also cure the unbelief of the priest. During the prayer of consecration, the host transformed into real flesh, and the wine transformed into real blood. Drops of blood fell from the priest's fingers onto the corporal, and the blood from the chalice overflowed staining the linen cloth. The head of the Blessed Virgin Mary's statue bowed in adoration before the miracle. Following the prodigy, the priest looked with wonder. He was remorseful for his lack of faith and for taunting the devotion of the farmer. Falling on his knees he repented and adored our Lord truly present in the Eucharist. He made a firm decision to honor Jesus in the Eucharist and never celebrate Holy Mass in haste. After the death of Juan and the priest, they were buried in this church. The French and German pilgrims were mainly responsible for spreading the news of the miracle across Europe. The miraculous host was stored on the Patton in the sanctuary for around 200 years until the year 1486. That year, King Ferdinand II of Aragon and his wife Queen Isabella I of Castile were traveling as pilgrims to the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela to venerate the relics of St. James the Apostle. On their way, they halted for the night at the monastery and learned of the miracle. They were greatly impressed by the story of the prodigy and wished to give the relics its due place of honor in a royal location. Having taken possession of the relics, they set on the journey. The king's horses moved to a distance and stopped, refusing to travel further. Considering this mysterious event as a sign from God, they returned to the church on foot and commissioned a crystal shrine reliquary to be designed to house the sacred host and the chalice. They requested Pope Innocent VIII that the Benedictines of Valladolid in Castile take over management of the monastery from the French Benedictines of San Giraldo de Aurillac, so that it could be put under royal protection. During the Peninsular War, the Church of St. Mary the Royal was set on fire erasing most of its documentations and history. 
In 1853, the Spanish Prime Minister, Juan Álvarez Mendizabal, a member of the taller sublime Masonic Lodge and the Liberal Movement, infamous for his anti-clericalism, confiscated the monastery and expelled the monks. The miracle of the Holy Grail has left such a deep impression on the hearts of the Galician people that they have incorporated the host, chalice, and paten, into their coat of arms. According to scientific examinations, the blood is of human origin, type AB and the flesh is of a human heart muscle from a beating left ventricle. The relics are treasured in two gold ampoules inside a glass safe. Even today, pilgrims visiting the church can see the flesh and blood of our good Lord. Each year, on August 15, September 8 and 9, the relics are carried in a solemn procession along with the statue of the Virgin Mary to commemorate the miraculous event. In the 1960s, Father Elias Valenas San Pedro committed himself to restoring the church and village of Ospriro. He gathered funds for the repairs, built houses for the locals, transformed a Palosa into a folk museum, and initiated the rebirth of the Camino de Santiago earning the title, Father of Ospriro. The sanctuary is currently under the care of the Franciscan Fathers. Let us pray that the Eucharistic Lord may inspire us to love the most holy sacrifice of the Mass. Long live Christ the King! If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends. I encourage you to donate so that I can make more of these videos. God bless.